What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. And today's video is going to be all about classes, objects, and constructors in C Sharp using Visual Studio. So this is a continuation in our C Sharp tutorial series. Um, and I just wanna say real quick, thank you to everyone who has suggested topics for videos, asked for help in the comments and left likes on the videos and subscribe to the channel. It's helping me a ton just getting this channel started. Um, so to continue on in our C Sharp tutorial series, we've talked about basic variable types and we've talked about for loops and while loops and some basic things you can do with code. But one thing we haven't talked about yet is what do you do when you have a more advanced variable type? So we've talked about just how to create a variable that's a string, like a name or, or something along those lines. Um, you know, and, and that's fine, but you get things sometimes in code that need to have multiple attributes assigned to them. And essentially you want to group those attributes together and create a new data type that is essentially a, a class in C Sharp. And the way you make it is pretty easy and the way you use it is pretty easy. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that today. And I wanna do it kind of in a fun way. So I wanna do it by acting like we're creating a class for storing video game information. So let's say um, you come over to your Solution Explorer, right click on your C-sharp file, and then go down to add, and then go to new item. And it should give you this pop-up and pretty much always right near the top is gonna to be class, but you can search in here if it's not. Um, and just go ahead and hit add class. And it's gonna auto generate pretty similar to when you open up your initial program. And to get between the two, you just click these tabs at the top here. Um, but okay, so what we do inside of this class is we define the attributes that we want in the outside world. So if you think of a few things you would want to store in like a video game storage um, class, you'd want like the title of the game. And so if this were in the outside world, you would do this. You would just say, okay, string title and then equals whatever, cause you're defining it. But here we're actually saying we want it to be like a generic variable that can be called by the outside world. So we need to add this public before it. And then we just do a uh, semicolon right there and we don't actually give it any initial value because you don't set those variables equal to any value when you define the class unless you want to give them a default value. They get set when you create a class in the outside world. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and let's say a second thing we want for the studio um, or for the video game like definition to store the information about is what studio produced it. And then let's use a double, which if you remember from our, our variable types is just a precise number. It's like a float or a decimal value that can do more accurate than integers. And we'll give it a rating like out of five stars. And then we'll do just one more so that I can show these classes can handle data from various different data types. So that's the, really the power of using it is you can use strings, doubles, ints, you can put functions inside of these and methods that we'll talk about as well. Um, but then we'll say, okay, what year was it made? Um, and for now, I think we'll just leave it at this and maybe so that you can see what's happening when we go back to our um, function, mm, we'll come back to this, but let's just leave it here for now because we've really just created it um, but the thing we haven't done is um, we just called it class one and actually typically when you're making this I recommend giving it a name that's going to be a little bit easier to um, to know what's in there. So when you create it there's an option to rename it but you also can rename it just within your game and you can see there just going down into file name um, you can rename it and just make sure you also call the class whatever you name the file. So we'll call ours game. And let's go back into the program and actually make a couple of these, okay? So um, the way you create a new instance of the class that you just made, and this is what's considered an object, is an instance of a class. It's very similar to defining a new variable. You say game, so that's the class that we're calling, and then just your variable name, and we'll call it game one, but you can call it whatever you want, it's a variable name. And then you say equals new, and then game, and then uh, just open close brackets and we'll talk about you can pass arguments in there and we'll do that in just a second. But now what we can do is like, okay, we've made the game. So if I type in game one dot, 
you get all of these variables that it knows because it can see your class. It knows to expect year, studio, title, rating. And so we can go in here and we can give it that information. We can say game one title equals Halo. Um, we can say the studio, I'll try not to mess these up. The studio is real Halo fans know the studio is uh, <laughs> Bungie. Um, if you type 343 in here, you're too young. Get out. Um, and then we'll give it a rating. So this is like how good we thought the game was out of five stars. We'll say 4.5. It's a good game. And what year it released. So Halo 1, the original one, uh, 2001. But what's really cool is, okay, we've just created all of this stuff. And so if I do something here, if I do console.writeline, um, and then I tell them we want to see game one dot title. Okay. When I run this function, um, it should just print out halo onto the screen because even though we didn't, um, create the class in this function, it's in our program and we referenced it. So I'll just go ahead and run it and we'll see halo. Okay. We got that. That's nice. Um, it's not really too exciting right now, but where it becomes really powerful is you can take what we just did and you can change it all to game two and you can put a second game in there and have all the same driver code, class code behind it. So let's say this is super Mario and that was made by Nintendo and let's give that a rating of 4.0 and that came out in 1983, okay? And so now if I were to say game one title, I can also say game two title. And what you'll see is we get both titles and that's great. Um, you know, that's the basics of a class and how to create one and how to create objects under a class. But where this becomes way more powerful is you get to really start cleaning up this code um, when you use what's called a constructor. And let's go ahead and do that next. So coming back into our class here, we're gonna keep all of this just as is, um, but we're going to create something that's called a constructor. And so to do that, we're gonna say public, and then the name of the class again, game, and then we're going to give it um, open and close parentheses, and then we're going to tell it what sort of arguments to expect. So what I want is I want from this line, I want to be able to just give it right here in these parentheses, the title, the studio, the rating and the year, and not have to have these four lines of code in here. Um, and so we come in here and we say, okay, we're going to pass in the title, but we don't just say string title like we would in the outside world because title already exists in this class. So what you need to do is you need to give it a different name. So I'll say arg title, short for argument title. You can call it whatever you want. The thing is you can't use exactly the same name that you already used in defining your class. It'll make a little more sense as soon as we get to the next part. But then let's say the second thing is string. We need the studio. Next will be double and we need the arg rating. And then the last one is int and we'll want the arg year. Okay. And now I'll, I'll be able to show you a little bit better why we had to do it that way. Um, so if we come down here, we need to, well, we need the container for this code. Um, we need to take those argument variables and assign them to the internal variables of the class. So we've already defined title. So what we do is we say title is equal to arg title. And then we do that for every one of them. We say studio is equal to arg studio. And this may seem like kind of a extra step of tying stuff together, but it's really not. Cause what we did when we said, um, title, studio, rating, and year, is we said what their internal names are going to be, but then these are the parameters that are actually being passed in. So, I mean, these could be totally meaningless. As long as you tie them to the right thing and you know what you're tying them to when you define them, it's fine, but it's just a better idea to give them a name that's going to make it more clear what you're doing. Okay, so you want it to look like this. You want all of your your variables you're passing in to be mapped to um, to be mapped to internal variables and to kind of show that this runs every time we call a object I'm gonna do one thing as well I'm gonna say console dot right line and I'm gonna print this storing data for 
And then I'm going to also say the title of the game. And then just because it looks a little better, I'm going to add a new line character. So basically, every time we make a new game, it'll print out on the console, storing data for whatever game we're making, and then print an empty line just to separate out these different things that are happening. Okay, so this is super cool. Go ahead and save it and head back into the main program. What we can do now is we can get rid of these lines of code, and I'll show you how, because we have this constructor, and it's giving us a red um, line. It should be giving you a red line, because now it's expecting parameters passed in. So now we give it a title, Halo, and we give it a studio, Bungie, and we give it its rating, and then we give it the year it came out, okay? And we can get rid of all four of these. Do, do, do. And we do the same thing down here. Super Mario. Nintendo. 4.0. 1983. Okay. And now we get rid of these four lines of code. So you can see just doing that, we just went from 10 lines of code to two lines of code. And so now I'll do the same thing. I'll show the game one title. But what I want to make clear here as well is actually we're not going to do title because we're going to show the title. Um, we'll we'll do this. This will be kind of cool. We'll say um, game game one, not with a capital G, game one dot title, and then we'll add to it was made by, and then we'll add game one dot studio and then we'll add in and then last thing we'll add game one dot year okay so i just want to show that even though we never say here what variable type title is we don't say that this is going to be title that's all being handled in the class over here and then what we'll do is we'll say game two dot rating is equal to 4.3. Just because I also want to show you can update those parameters even after they're initially created. So that's what we're doing here. And so then we'll say here game two rating. And we'll actually say game two dot title. And we'll add has a rating of. And then we'll add the rating. So even though when we define Super Mario Brothers, we gave it a rating of 4.0, during our function, we decided to update the rating to 4.3. Okay, so let's go ahead and just run this because I know we did a lot of stuff and we haven't run it in a little while. So you'll see storing data for Halo, storing data for Super Mario. I guess I put an extra caps in there. <laughs> um, but these first two are happening in the class, in the in the. Uh, class that we defined separately but then these next ones are happening in our main project um, so these top two are happening because of the constructor function that we made but then we're using that data and manipulate manipulating it wow so halo was made in Bung by bungie in 2001 super mario's rating of 4.3 so maybe using games is a bit of a silly example but i think there's a really quick and really useful introduction to classes objects and constructors in c sharp um, we're co we've covered a lot of the basic building blocks of various C sharp programs and of, of building more advanced C sharp programs. And so what some of the upcoming tutorials will be are actually your first application you could build with a graphical user interface or how this might apply to plugging into like a game engine like Unity, how C sharp can be leveraged there. So we will be diving into some of those concepts. If there are more basic concepts that you would like to see in C Sharp before we get into too much of the advanced stuff, just let me know about in the comments below. Um, if there's enough interest in the topic, I'll be sure to make a video on it. Um, if you have found these useful, please consider subscribing to the channel, leaving a like on the video. It helps me out a ton. I really appreciate all of the support. And as always, good luck with your code and thanks for watching. Thanks, bye.